to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. What kind of life brings glory and honor to Almighty God? And how can I live a life that honors God with everything I've got? Today we're going to talk about the amazing life that honors God and that brings glory to His name in every way. And as we think about that, we want to ask ourselves, are we really living a life that honors God? Think about this passage. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. Isaiah said, Everyone, or God said, Everyone who's called by my name, whom I created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. I've been created to glorify God. How am I living up to that challenge? That's what we're going to think about in our lesson today, and we sure hope you'll join us and continue with us as we study that together. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective Play Stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Paul said, Whether we eat or whether we drink, whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. Even small things, Paul said, like eating and drinking or whatever it is, the Christian's life is designed to laud and magnify the Almighty. Isn't that the idea of Matthew 5, 16? Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And friend, I hope we realize today that's the essence of why God created us. Remember the passage we began with? Isaiah 43, verse 7. God says, everyone who's called by my name, Isaiah 62, 1 and 2, when the Gentiles saw God's righteousness, his people be called by a new name. They were called Christians first in Antioch, Acts 11, verse 26. Everyone who calls themselves by God's name, a Christian. God says, whom I created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Do we realize that a big part of our purpose 
is to bring honor and glory to Almighty God. And as we think about that idea, how do we do that? How do I live my life? What are some practical things that I can and should do every day that are going to bring honor and, and, and magnify the name of Almighty God on a practical level? How do I live a life that glorifies the Almighty? Friend, let's consider what the Bible teaches we can do to honor God with our life every day. And we begin, I guess, with the biggest one. The best thing that I can do to glorify and honor God with my life is to live with purpose. Again, think about the words of 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Are you living life with purpose? The Bible says, whether we eat or whether we drink, whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. We live in a world, my friend, where so many people are looking for purpose and meaning in life. And, and there's a lot of people who are just kind of meandering through life. They've, they've got a lackadaisical approach. They, they don't know why they're here, where they're going, or what they're going to do while they're here. And, and it just seems like they're void of any real meaning and purpose in life. To truly honor God with my life, I need to live according to purpose. What is that purpose? Think about the book of Ecclesiastes for just a moment. And, and Solomon, his life was devoid of meaning through periods in time in his life. He tried a little bit of everything. He tried it in knowledge, the acquisition of knowledge. He tried it in building things, musical composition, whatever hobby, whatever lust, whatever passion there was, whatever building project he could think of. He tried to get involved in that, searching for meaning. And all of it, Solomon said, was worthless, vain, until he reaches this one grand conclusion. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Listen now. This is the whole duty of man. What's it all about? Friend, until I realize right in the center of everything in my life, think of your life as kind of a circle or a wheel. And right in the center of that, God and serving him and living for him has got to be the, the hub of that that holds everything together. And when God's in the center, everything that I do that's holy and right is going to bring honor and glory to Him. And so put God where He needs to be in your life so that you can truly honor and glorify Him by living with purpose. What else honors God? In the Bible, recognizing our sin and confessing that brings honor to God. I want you to look at an Old Testament passage with me. It's kind of a disturbing one. Joshua chapter 7. God's people in the battle of Ai, they should have won very easily. There should have been no question to the defeat of those people, but something happened there that wasn't right, and God's people started losing the battle, and so they began to seek out why. And God had told them, don't take any of the spoils, leave it there, we're not going to take it. And a man by the name of Achan, he took a Babylonian garment and a bar of gold and hid it in his tent. And people began to die in battle. God's people began to lose, and so they sought God's will, and God began to tell them, and they began to find this problem out. And finally, they come to Achan, they find that it's him. And look at what is said in Joshua chapter 7, verse number 19. Now Joshua said to Achan, my son, I begged you, listen to this. Give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me what you've done. Do not hide it from me. What do we learn about confessing our sin and our wrongs? Friend, that, that honors God. God already knows it. If we say we have no sin, we make God a liar and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us all sin and to cleanse us from all iniquity. The word confess does not mean, God, there's something that you don't know that I'm about to tell you about. It's not like you stole a cookie out of the cookie jar and God doesn't know it and now you're about to tell him. That's not what the word confess means. The word confess means to lay alongside of. Here's God's holy will. He knows everything that's already happened. 
When I lay alongside of that, I am owning up to what God already knows. I'm being honest and I'm living according to holy character by recognizing I've sinned, I've erred exceedingly, I've played the fool in the words of Saul. And so confessing sin brings honor to God. You know, we live in a society today where people are hesitant to admit wrong, where, where we don't like to talk about man's failures, a man's inability. We, we, we have such a, a humanistic mindset and we sometimes think man is the ideal specimen that to admit failure is wrong. Let's be honest. All of us of an accountable age have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And when we confess and recognize and own up to that, that honors God and it makes the record straight. When we live according to his pattern, we own up to that. How, how else do we honor and glorify God? Friend, I can glorify God in my life today by living a pure life. L look in your Bible in 1 Peter chapter 1 with me. I want you to see what the scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 1. By doing my best to live a life of purity, I honor God. Look in verse number 15. The Bible says, But as he who called you is holy. You also be holy in your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. When I try to imitate the holiness of God, when I try to live a life pure and free from sin, that honors God because God's holy. I'm following his pattern and that reflects on the goodness and the holiness of Almighty God. And friend, that's what I ought to do. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God, the Holy Spirit dwells in you, and you have from God, that you're not your own, that you were bought at a price? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. When I live a pure life after the pattern of Jesus, after the example of the holiness of God, friend, that only reflects good in God that honors and magnifies his name in every way. How else do we honor God? Friend, we honor God when we have a, a thankful spirit. Truly being thankful in your life and giving thanks brings great glory and honor to God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 with me. Notice the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I want you to hear what the scripture says. In verse number 15, the Bible says, For all things are for your sake, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving, listen to this, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. When the Christian in everything gives thanks, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 17 through 21, we're thanking the Almighty. We're recognizing, we're honoring God and glorifying Him because we're recognizing every good and every perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights with whom there is no shadow or variation of turning. We're honoring God because we know He's the good giver. Everything I have, everything I am, everything I ever will have or will be, I owe to God and His goodness and His mercy. Let me illustrate the need to be thankful. Luke 17, about verses 11 through 18. Ten lepers come to Jesus. And, and, and leprosy during that day and age was a terrible disease. Not only do you have the physical disease that went with it, but according to the law of Moses, you stayed outside the camp. If anybody started to come near you, you had to cry out that you were unclean and basically scare them off so they didn't come over and get what you had. You were excommunicated from fellowship and from worshiping in the temple for the safety and protection of others, no doubt. But 10 lepers, they come to Jesus and they seek Jesus to heal them of their leprosy. And Jesus, out of a benevolent spirit and heart, heals all 10 of them of their leprosy. But one leper came back to thank God, to thank Jesus. One out of the ten came back. And in Luke 17, verse 17, do you remember the question Jesus asked? Where are the nine? Where are the rest? 
Friend, not only is being thankful something that honors and magnifies God, God expe- we ought to be and God expects his people to be a thankful people, saying thank you, living a life that proves our thankfulness, having a spirit of thankfulness. That's something that, that brings honor and magnifies God who gives us everything that we have. How else do Christians glorify God? Friend, we glorify God when we pray with an, with an expectant attitude. I'm not saying that you pray in a demanding way, but when we pray knowing that God can and will answer our prayers, that honors God. Let me illustrate. Open your Bible to the Gospel of John, chapter 14. We're going to look in verses 13 and 14 together. Jesus said to his disciples, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Now watch this. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Praying through Jesus as our mediator, realizing that he can, will, can and will help us. When we pray the way God tells us to and have a prayerful attitude, listen to this, that the Father is glorified through the Son. When we bow our head and we pray in the name of Jesus, what does that mean? We're honoring God and His Son, and God's being glorified in our prayer life because we know and believe that God works through prayer, and His Son is a means and avenue by which we approach Him today. Let's then think of another way that, practically speaking, I can glorify God in my life. Friend, I glorify God by suffering courageously as a Christian. I want the passage I want you to see is found in 1 Peter chapter 4, and I want you to hear the words of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 16. Listen to what the Bible says here. Peter says, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this name. Now, if you suffer as an evildoer, if you suffer as a criminal, if you suffer for your own faults, what good is that? Peter will basically say. But if you suffer as a Christian, if if we suffer because we believe Jesus is the Son of God, if we suffer because we believe the gospel saves, if we suffer because we're not going to bow down at the altar of worldliness and, and paganism and sin, if we suffer for that reason, it's, it's not because of something I am or I want or I need. We're suffering for a greater cause. And when people, think about this, when people look at Christians, it's not why we're doing it, but when people look at Christians who won't bow down and back down are going to stand up for Jesus and support the truth no matter what, they say of those Christians, it's not about them. They really believe in what they stand up for and what they hold to. And when they see that, who gets the honor and glory? Not the Christian. God. It's his system. It's his gospel. It's his son. It's his word that we're holding to. And our commitment does not bring the glory and honor to ourselves. That's not what it's about. People look at that and they say, Christians, they really believe that message and they're willing to die for it. And my friend, the honor and the glory, when we suffer courageously, God gets the honor and the glory out of that. Another way that Christians can glorify God practically in their life is by bearing the type of fruit in our life that we ought to bear. Open your Bible, if you would, to the Gospel of John again. And I want you to look at what Jesus says about bearing fruit. In John chapter 15, notice the words, if you would, of verse number 8. This whole discussion is about fruit. Jesus is the vine. We're the branches. We've got to be connected to him. The need to bear fruit is emphasized multiple times. But look at what happens in John 15, verse 8. Jesus says, by this, watch now, by this... My Father is glorified. By what? That you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. The idea of bearing fruit, and you can see it. First century time, someone might have a vineyard. They plant that vineyard. The, it begins to grow. The rain nourishes it. It makes blooms at the right time of year. And as those blooms come on, you know in just a little bit, fruit is going to be hanging on that vine going to bear fruit just like you intended. If it didn't bear fruit, you'd cut it down and you'd find one that would, right? 
When that bears fruit, when Christians obey the gospel, we're connected to Jesus Christ, he's the vine, and when we bear spiritual fruit, who gets the glory from that? When a Christian does good to other people through Jesus Christ and to the honor of God, who's glorified by that? When the church reaches out in her community and helps the needy and the poor, the Lord gets the glory. It's his church. When Christians talk like they ought to talk, when morally we live like we ought to live, when even in the face of persecution, we don't, we're not doing evil toward our enemies, but we love them. When we bear spiritual fruit, have the faith and the love, the self-control, uh, all the virtues and fruits that we ought to have mentioned in 2 Peter 1, verses 5 through 9, and Galatians 5, verse 16 following. When we have those, God is magnified and glorified by the life we live because that pattern set up for that life is given by the Lord Jesus Christ. And what an honor that is to Almighty God. All right, let me mention three or four more ways by which we can glorify God today. We also glorify God today when we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look in your Bible to the book of 2 Thessalonians. I want you to look in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Notice verse number 1. The Apostle Paul says this, Finally, brethren, Pray for us, listen now, that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified, just as it is with you. When God's word takes flight, as it were, when that word is spread, when that word lights in people's hearts, when the seed is planted and it, it takes good hold and the gospel spread, God's glorified. When Christians take the message of Jesus, to people who don't know the gospel, have never heard of Christianity. Think about this. When Christianity comes to an area, that area is helped in every way. I'm talking about true Christianity. Their morals are lifted up, their attitude, their work habits, their speech. Christianity lifts up society. True Christianity in the New Testament lifts up Society makes better people, makes better relationships, makes better workers and bosses in every way. The spreading the gospel and that taking hold of people's lives brings glory and honor to Almighty God. Another way that we can glorify God today is by giving of ourselves sacrificially. Look in your Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. When Christians are giving people, giving of themselves, giving of them time, their talent, their funds as well. That brings honor to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I want you to hear verses 6 and 7. Paul says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Friend, when we give of our talents to the cause of Christ and good is done, who gets the glory there? We want God and Christ to get the glory. When we give of our time, God's glorified. When I give financially to the work of the local congregation, that doing good in the community brings honor and glory to God in every way. We don't give grudgingly. I don't give because I'm going to, I don't, I don't give of a grudging necessity. Uh, as a purpose in my heart, I give cheerfully. And when I give with the right attitude and the right intent to the work of God, surely Almighty God is glorified in every way. Now let me mention one last way, and this is a big one, that God is glorified today. God is glorified today when we unite, when we have unity among all who believe in Christ and his message. That's God's plan. Look in John 17. God wants unity for his church. 
God wants there to be one church, one plan of salvation, and one way. And when we seek to have unity, God is glorified. John 17, listen to the words of Jesus in verse 20 and 21. Jesus says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they all, listen to the prayer, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. I want them to have the unity we have. Why? That they also may be one in us, watch this, that the world may believe you sent me. One of the greatest testimonies to Jesus Christ, to his gospel, to his message, and to his life, ought to be the unity of Christians. When we unite under the headship of Jesus, under his authority, under his gospel, and in his church, and when we make a, a unified effort to only do what the Bible says, to put away all ideas and prejudice and, and denominationalism of men, and let Jesus and his way be the only way to speak where the Bible speaks, be silent where the Bible's silent, to, to ask, is there any word from the Lord? And then just simply do what God says. When we have that spirit of unity, friend, the war, it's a great testimony to the world that Jesus is the almighty son of God. And so my friend, we ask today, is your life being lived? Is our life being lived in such a way that it brings honor and glory to the name of God. Are you a Christian? Have you obeyed the pure, simple message of Jesus Christ? Have you heard the word of God? Do you believe it? Have you been baptized for the remission of your sins? Acts 18, 8, Acts 2, 38. If you are a Christian, is your life doing what it ought to to bring honor to God? If not, make those changes. And friend, we urge you to join us next time as we're gonna look deeper into God's message in his way. Thank you for joining us. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, and downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the Gospel of Christ.